Well, damn, that was an intense week. <laughs> Are we gonna get into it? Let's go right in. Once again, my name is Oak with Absalom, the Arts of Astrology and Demon Slaying. This forecast is for the week of July 21st and onward. Here at Absalom, we're in the business of giving you the business about what is going on in the sky, how that is impacting us here on the earth realm, and delivering it in ways that'll make you say, hmm, that'll make you think, wow, that'll give you a little bit of, oh, <laughs> all this done with love, all this done with honesty, and in a desire to be in service and presence with what is happening in the world. So bless. If you like these words, if you like every weekly share, if you like the other episodes where I talk about healing and what it's like to heal from a genuine place, feel free to leave a five-star review. Feel free to leave a comment. These things help to have other people find these messages. And so yes, let's get into this weekly forecast, which I am titling the week of July 21st, a huge foreshadowing. My friends, I called the forecast for last week the dongles of 2020 and the dingles of 2025. And you know what? This week is still dongle dingle. <laughs> and it's actually just, it's, it's just this period of time. And what I want to say is like, if you follow any astrology at all, everyone is talking about this Mars Uranus conjunction. And absolutely, you know, every single thing that happened last week is kind of indicative of the Mars Uranus conjunction from the uh, the 11 tornadoes that hit Chicago and like several tornadoes just hitting the entire like Midwest or mid portion of the country from the, the slurry of the United States media claiming that Iran is responsible for the attempted assassination on Trump uh, from the ICJ ru ruling of uh, Israel actually being an apartheid state and how now the international community is starting to isolate Israel and all the actions that are associated with occupation are now apparently immoral according to the court which you know I have a lot of feelings about that but you know there's some progress happening all of these things happening just so shortly within a week of each other there was a, a daytime meteor that struck New Jersey and not to mention a massive power outage <laughs> that affected uh, computer systems worldwide, from transportation to hospitals to the workplace, just general. Oh, the banking system. I mean, like, it was really creepy. And all of this within, you know, the period of time that the ICJ ruling came out. Yes, this is Mars Uranus at work. But my friends, it's a little deeper than that. Because what I was saying last week is that 29 Capricorn is very present in the astrology of this full moon that happens today early earlier sunday morning 3 20 i believe 3 20 a.m pacific we had that full moon in capricorn at 29 degrees and here's the thing is that pluto will station direct here for a final time at 29 degrees later on i believe that will be october 12 of 2024 so as this is all happening, as 29 Capricorn is being reactivated this week. So just to reframe, you know, these events are activated by the Mars Uranus conjunction, but there's something much deeper that is at play, which is the Pluto return of the United States. And I made a video about this in 2021. And, you know, it was a big deal because we're actually still in the Pluto return of the United States. And every single thing that we are dealing with right now in the world is actually I would say like quite adjacent to the Pluto return of the United States because of the influence that the United States has over the rest of the world. And so, you know, as the United States is kind of in a period of massive transition, it affects everyone in these various ways. I mean, there's there's other factors, but I'd say that this is a pretty big indicator. Now, I made a new video just this weekend about the Pluto return of the United States in terms of how it is related to right now. Because when we were thinking about, as astrologers, when we were thinking about the Pluto return of the United States back in 2021 or 2020, it was more speculative, right? And now we have all this information that has come to the surface. I go over a lot of this in the updated Pluto return of the United States video because I just, I think it, requ I think it requires a lot more than what I can give in this forecast. 
But, you know, basically, as Pluto is really getting ready to station direct on 29 degrees Capricorn later on in October, you know, we can't deny that there's still more that's coming up, right? The Epstein case, which is so intertwined with this because celebrity culture and politics are inter interwoven with the Epstein Island stuff, all the trafficking, even within this month, you know, as Pluto is still moving back towards um, 29 Capricorn. And it's just, it, it means that there is more information that is being revealed. The grand jury records of all of the Epstein court cases, and they've been going on for what, like 18 years, I think around, around 18 years, but like those were released. And so like, and undoubtedly, we are going to be having more information coming out by October. Because we had a full moon in Capricorn just today, Sunday, July 21st, I am really wanting to highlight the fact that we are in a period of a huge foreshadowing. This is not a light full moon. This full moon is representative of the United States Pluto placement, which is not only having its Pluto return, it is 27 degrees Capricorn. So I know this is like really technical. And if you're not really like an astrology person, then like you're like, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> but if you are, you know, like this is like big stuff. And if you want to learn more, you know, you really should check out my YouTube because there is some pretty cool stuff. You know, like I go into detail about Neptune at 29 Pisces. I think it's actually a lot more that you'll be able to understand the overall environment that we're in. You know, like daily astrology is cute and everything, but there is actually like these much these much greater layers into how time is operating. And it just makes me think about how if we actually tune into the overarching narrative, right, and really think about, yes, Mars Uranus conjunction, right? Like it happened on Monday of last week. And you know, my forecasts come out on Sundays. So literally on monday and even over the weekend like as i was creating the forecast it's like there was so much news that was happening and i was like oh i guess it'll have to wait until next week but every single thing and particularly the outages that happen worldwide the offensives that are happening between israel and iran those are big right like iran is 10 toes down like you will pay for the attack that happened like they did an airstrike on iran and then it was it was as a result of a drone attack that happened in Tel Aviv. So they're definitely going at it. And, you know, just a few days prior to that, right, the United States media is saying, oh, yeah, and Iran is responsible for the attempted assassination on Trump. I'm just like, that's bullshit. But anyway, um, there's there's something being set up. The stage is being set up. And because all of this is happening while the sun is traversing the area that Mars will go retrograde in December and January and February, my friends. It, it doesn't take much when you're studying astrology to know that these periods of time are connected. And it just, it, when I say it's a huge foreshadowing, when I'm talking about how 2020 and 25 are being woven together right now, they're being braided together, I really mean those things. Like, one of the things that I'm realizing about myself is that I really am very serious about my language and that I, it's like it all is coming from this place. I'm trying to be as specific as possible given the information and data that I have. And that's kind of my dedication to my work and that's my dedication to y'all with these forecasts. Um, but yeah, like foreshadowing is happening and the way that that shows up this week is a little bit man, it's, it's very ominous, right? It was a full moon that's conjunct to Pluto, which is already very intense. There's more reveals that are, that are certain. I would say like the biggest themes of this week are, are centered around the beginning of the week. So as of right now, with this full moon conjunct to Pluto, you know, the sun is building to be opposed to Pluto. It is definitely felt on Sunday. It will be exact on Monday evening and we'll definitely feel that into Tuesday. Sun Pluto is a very important day, you know, happens every year. And there's a way that we get to see our stuff, you know, the, 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 the processes of our mind intensify, our ability to perceive intensifies. We might 
be in victim mode. We might be feeling that someone is being an asshole to us. We might be really looking at our own wounding, right? We might be feeling just really irritated and people are acting super fucked up. But usually when the shadow is available, we're actually watching everyone being present with things that they might not necessarily see. And so it's, it's kind of a great time to, to be able to say, okay, this is what I'm working with right now. You know, if you're looking at other people's shit and they're kind of flailing and, and acting a fool, then that's cool. But there's also something for you to, to receive as well. But on the world stage, damn it, y'all. You know, there is a lot of threats, right? There's a lot of threats happening between um, Iran, Israel. Israel is bombing Lebanon, right? Like, this is all, you know, like, Sun Pluto stuff is nuclear war. It is, it is war. It is conflict, like, really immense conflict, actually. So I think that there's a lot that will be revealed just in the start of this week. So this is stuff to consider in the context of the long run because you know this is the area the mars will actually go retrograde later <sighs> yeah it's um i think we can bookmark this week and say okay we'll, we'll pay attention because you know the new form of warfare right is technological and so like that that outage that happened that impacted hospitals banks uh people couldn't access their money like this is our warning message as just normal people that are you know affected by things that happen in the world it is time now you guys to get a power generator it is time now to have a backup plan it is now time to start building with other people to make sure if shit hits the fan do we have the support that we need people in the united states are goofy as shit and like literally don't have the training or the mindset to to really think about like how do we take care of ourselves outside of going to Target? What if Target's not available, y'all? <laughs> but I'm dead ass. Like this is <clears throat> this is so serious right now. And the best thing about astrology is that it does give foreshadowing. We have to be able to kind of organize ourselves. In March of 2023, when Pluto entered Aquarius, I I, I made this like little checklist. What are the things that we need to do to prepare for? Pluto and Aquarius, because essentially what is promised is that there will be some big traumatic event, some big event that really shifts our perspective around technology. And our technology is a lot about all of our modern conveniences, right? It's like power, our computers, our phones, even flight is something that's associated with Aquarius. So all of that was highlighted to us during that outage that happened on Friday. I have several friends where their workspaces were actually, you know, either halted or some of the some of the things weren't working. And so because this is a foreshadowing, we kind of have, at least if what's going to be organized within this framework of like, okay, Mars retrograde will probably be the time that this occurs. And I'm really kind of just predicting that that's actually the time that a lot of these things are coming to a head, my friends, just to be completely honest with you. So we have about five, six months to start thinking about what it is really like to prepare for kind of further levels of chaos. If anything, we've been given a lot of time. You know, this didn't happen out of nowhere, right? 2020 started to show us what it's like when systems are actually like not prepared for X, X crisis. And now, we have some time if you're accepting that our reality has shifted then it is a lot easier for us to to do preparation work rather than you know fiddling around with thinking about some of the more superficial things you know food water if there is a major outage of any kind and it, you won't be able to reach anyone do you have a community meeting point or at least with like you know your your chosen family and groups of friends like these are good things to organize and it is just it is just this period of time overall the astrology of the united states pluto return is not just like you know wow this country is fucked up it's also like wow we have relied on so much within this country and as a lot of those structures are actually starting to crumble 
and revealing themselves further about their actual motives and we don't fit into those like we don't fit into the care of those motives it's like okay how long is it going to take for us to really get the memo and and start to be a lot more accountable you know and it's not all based on one person it's like we have to be collectively accountable so my suggestion is to really start to to build and bond with the people who are able to create deeper levels of support outside of technology you know or doing innovative things with technology this is pretty much my message y'all like it is more so like hey from a logical perspective me looking at charts and, and reading this stuff for almost a decade now i'm just like you know <laughs> this is a fair warning that's kind of like my attitude around it and yeah we're just we're just getting to that point where shit is just getting weirder and weirder and and i think that you know this in other words um so there there's a big shift as the sun moves into leo on monday morning we will have we'll have that shift and that's just generally a time of of having like more vitality by today sunday mars is now in gemini and it will remain there until september 3. so we have a full month plus month and a half i think of mars and gemini you know just enjoy it like there's a type of chaos that mars and gemini kind of brings just like the busyness of it all but i will prefer that over when mars is in cancer later and then when mars is getting ready to station retrograde in leo and, and it will kind of like be in that slow space until like april of 2025 so like soak it in you guys like soak in a period where things feel a little bit like they're moving forward because pretty much mars retrograde is just genuinely one of the more annoying energies for everyone just because it feels like so slow and confusing it doesn't really matter which sign it occurs in like usually it is very much like there is some internal aggravation that occurs so um like i said soak it up but you know mars and gemini in relationship to the United States chart, you know, that's the seventh house and uh, that is a lot more offensive on a lot of levels. So not particularly excited about that, but you know, we'll just pay attention to the news. Mercury makes its appearance in Virgo. That will be on Thursday, but Mercury will get ready to station retrograde by August 5. So we'll just have a little bit of time with Mercury in Virgo, and then it was stationed direct on August 23, I believe. So we're also getting into that Mercury retrograde territory. So yeah, just enjoy this week. You know, I think that there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's enough in the beginning of the week that will give you enough to chew on. <laughs> and yeah, you know, this is just one of those things. Like, this is genuinely how I see astrology, you guys. Like, I don't care as much about the smaller things but i'm really interested in like weaving together the stuff that matters and uh, yeah i mean the small stuff matters you know it's just i oftentimes i'm thinking about things from like a zoomed out perspective so yeah check out my pluto return of the united states video recap that one i just launched this weekend i think it'll be really helpful if you want to just drop into the information a little bit more um, my mentorship program is pretty much almost full. I'm super excited to get that going. The next one is in January. Um, if you're interested in any herbals that can be super supportive for you this year, wow, those, those formulas are great. Check that out. It's called Ultimate Power Ojas. They are formulas that are going to support you physically and spiritually. And bless you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in again. And I will see you next week.